So this film will explain the meaning of the term dead space in injecting equipment and clarify the terminology that we use to describe the four different types of needle and syringe combination that are available from needle and syringe exchange programs. So dead space is the void space that exists in a needle and syringe from the end of the plunger when it's fully depressed to the tip of the needle. The reason that dead space is significant is because when people are injecting drugs they know that there's wasted drug in the syringe in, that, in the dead space and what they do to get the drug out is they do something that's called flushing. They pull the plunger back, partially fill the syringe with blood to mix it with the drugs, and then they inject that. And it means that after injection with illicit drugs, the, the dead space is filled with blood. And obviously that is a bloodborne virus transmission risk if the syringe is then used by someone else. So we used to think that all syringes were equally dangerous and that if they were shared there was an equal high risk of bloodborne virus transmission. But we then realised that when you have a, a high dead space syringe, because there's more blood, there's more virus in that blood and it survives for longer. So high dead space syringes represent a much greater risk of bloodborne virus transmission than low dead space syringes. When needle exchanges first started, there was just basically two types of needle and syringe uh, combination available. There was a fixed one mil syringe with the needle attached during manufacture, which has a very low dead space of only three microliters. And then there was Lua slip and Lua lock syringes for detachable needles, which because there's a void space, both in the tip of the syringe and in the hub of the needle, that has a dead space of about 100 microliters. Unfortunately, it's not possible to just stop giving out high dead space syringes for detachable needles because people need detachable needles either because the length or the thickness of needle that they require isn't available in a fixed needle syringe or because they need to change the needle during the injecting process because it gets blunt when they're looking for veins. So steps were taken to try and reduce the dead space in syringes for detachable needles and there's two solutions to that problem which have varying degrees of success. So the first solution was what's called a low dead space needle. Now low dead space needles have a plastic spike uh, in the hub which goes down into the tip of the syringe filling the void space and reducing the dead space significantly. So a low dead space needle attached to a syringe has a dead space somewhere between 10 and 35 microliters. The other partial solution to the problem is a reduced dead space syringe. Now these syringes don't reduce the dead space as much as you might think they do because although the spike on the end of the plunger fills the tip of the syringe, it isn't able to go into the hub of the high dead space needle that fits onto it. So the dead space in a reduced dead space syringe needle combination is about 50 microliters. In order to reduce harm, we want to reduce the dead space as much as possible. So in order of risk, there's fixed one mil syringes, which are low dead space syringes, which have around three microliters of dead space. Next is low dead space needles, which have the plastic spike which goes down into the tip of the syringe, which reduce the dead space to between 10 and 35 microliters. Then there's reduced dead space syringes, which only reduce the dead space by about 50% to 50 microliters, because the dead space is all in the hub of the needle. And then finally, the highest risk with 100 microliters of dead space is a high dead space needle and syringe combination.